We're live on YouTube. We're live on Hello. Instagram. Hello, everybody. Guten Tag, uh, Reiner and uh, Mr. Amemon. Amemnon. Amemnon. Sorry about the uh, pronunciation. Welcome to <laughs> Sunday Tea Book episode 35. Okay, I got I got made fun of a few episodes ago because I freak out at the beginning of every. <laughs> Every episode, because I'm like 35, hold, or what, back when it was 23, I yeah, freaked out. Yeah, we did that at like 18. I was like, oh my God, we did it at right? 18. And then every episode. So then so I got that. a little bit teased. <laughs> I got a little bit teased a couple episodes ago. So I don't know if anybody noticed, but I was really subdued. Hey, welcome back to episode 34. If you check episode 34, it's actually episode 34. I almost cracked. I started, was, the, <gasps> I started the whoa of wow. Oh wow! And then I okay. and then right. I held and. it back. I'm not holding back anymore. Okay, guys. Episode 35. Hello, Anna MB18 on Instagram. Episode 35. Holy crow! Um, Clifford Little. Hey, welcome. You found Hello. us. Awesome. Yes. yes. Over all the way from the UK, if I recall. Time signature MMA. Holy final frontier. Is this the apocalypse or a new beginning? Great question. Time signature. This is neither. This is the second to last episode. Next week is the apocalypse, okay? Which will be a new beginning. Anyway, we'll talk more about that later. Mm. Fernanda, hello. Um, awesome, everybody. Hello, Bruna, Josh, Mr. Amemnon. Hello from Frankfurt. Yes, as I said, Guten Tag, Simmerjeet. Hello, what eh? What did you say? Hmm? Guten Tag? Uh, good day, hi. Oh, I okay, guess. okay. I, don't know. I oh. stole it from Reiner who said, uh, Right. Well, he said Guten Abend. I don't know what that means, so I don't want to repeat it because oh. um, probably it's very cordial, but you never know. Okay. I have found Who you. Betty. Hello, oh, Betty. Oh. JS. Hey, okay. no worries, JS. It's great to have you back. Great mm. to see you again. Cindy, good morning from California. Everybody let us know where you're from. It's so fun. And what you're see. drinking today. And what you're drinking. What a global crowd we have. Everybody, look at all the people on Instagram. We got Sweet Tea, Forest Hill Tea, and uh, Anna MB. Welcome. Instagram people, I'll give you a little f flash forward. You want to jump over to the YouTube, okay? Because that's where all the cool, fun stuff happens, like tea trivia coming up in just a few minutes. All right. I'm sorry, I noticed your ah. hair. Yeah, everybody I see cut, my hair? I cut that yesterday, everything. You know, there's a finished version by Stylist and the next day, <laughs> you laugh, you're asleep. You look like a, yeah. uh, like a modified mohawk, kind of. Stand up. Yeah, so let's tell them. They're going to tell us what they're drinking. Everybody tell us what you're drinking. And everybody, I'm going to go out ahead right up, right up front okay. for Josh. And I'm going to say, everybody, you got to recommend Josh what he needs to drink today because he asks every time. So let's just get out in front of that. <laughs> oh, wait, wait. He's drinking a lovely three soft poached eggs with an AB comparison of German poppy seed toast and English marmalade. Ooh, okay, okay. Maybe. Fizz. Maybe Josh doesn't need our help today, but anyway, let him know which tea to brew. Uh, Victor Lindbergh from Sweden drinking Shampoar. Oh, Welcome, cool. Victor. So cool. And uh, okay, very cool. What are we drinking today? I'm going to go. Mm. So Instagram people, you're going to miss this. You're going to get the sort of hold in front of the phone view, but I'm going to give the YouTube people a little look at what we're brewing right now while we talk about what we're brewing. Mm -hmm. So there it is. So Today see. we will be brewing a white tea known as Chaumet. You can go ahead. You can, I'm just goofing around. No, no, I love your voice. It's really pretty. Chaumet. So um, on the YouTube side, I'm showing the uh, website and you'll notice it's in Euro. I was doing some work on the website. I forgot to switch it back, but it's good to let you guys know that we not only have a currency converter, but we do ship internationally. You can see we have description down below and all kinds of additional information about all of our teas. We also show the dry leaf, the brewed leaf and the liquor color. I feel those are essential to see for every single tea in the whole wide world before you buy. So that is what we do about that. Show me. I can't wait. I feel like we've been drinking white tea quite a bit lately and I'm quite yeah. happy about that. Um, ooh, Beirang is drinking some Singren Danzong. Mmm, almond with Betty. Nice. Nice. I, I'm trying to remember where, where Beirang was from. I don't remember. I know. It's also De Denmark, Sweden, oh, really Denmark. Cold. Denmark, Denmark, right? right? So we got Sweden in the house, we got Denmark in the house, Germany, Brazil. Uh, I feel like I missed some. 
obviously Canada. I should have missed Canada. We're in Canada. <laughs> Everybody, if you're wondering where we're from, I always ask people where they're from. They have right. no idea where I'm from. I'm just a little face on the screen, right? Well, the face is in Canada. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Had a very rare. Right, Suti so asked, "What year is this? This YT is mm. from 2019. 2019, show me." Yep, she's right. I had to think about it too. I had the I... same thing. I'm like, "Was it not 18? No, no, it was 19. It was yes. 19. A 2019 show me. Mm. Uh, delightful. Minor age, but you know, still pretty fresh. Mm. Um, not you... much age of flavor. You sh yeah, Did that's we right. That last time? Did we win? We've had Were this, this one recently. We all uh, show me or Bamudan. I forgot. I, I, I feel like too. it was Bamudan. I, I feel like that we one had Bamudan in a bit. recent episode too. Mm. Recently, so okay, okay. I don't know because mm. I did a tea video of Bamudan. I felt like I had done this one and I was going to show it and just steal my work. Clifford Little from England. Yes. Hey, mm. Cha Holiday. Finally free on a Sunday. Hey, welcome back. Oh, Good to see you again. Yeah. And, uh, oh, I love Dan's Hong, but I'm having some head and shoe shoe puar. Mm. <laughs> All right, that's a good chance for me to talk a little bit about our Discord because I did a little Reiner. I think you posted that originally, the head and shoe puar, and then I did a little, a little upgrade. I, I pulled out the aged head and shoe, right? You have to go to the Discord to see what the heck we're talking about there. All right. That was really cool. I guess I better get down to some business. What do you think? Yeah, what? What is Sunday Tea Book? All right, you're all here. What is Sunday Tea Book? A lot of you are regulars. Thank you for coming back. We appreciate it. Um, speak amongst yourselves while I explain to all the new people what the heck is Sunday Tea Book. Sunday Tea Book is where Jen and I, Phil and Jen, we take a book, paper, or an article that has great information and we, um, it's, it's not available in the West either because it's not translated or it's poorly translated and we fix that. We, we fix the translation, we go over it step by step together. We get into the details of where the terms come from, why they're confusing, what the confusion is. It's, it's just a rich experience to really dig into a lot of the misunderstanding and confusion around Chinese tea. And by doing this, it might seem boring, right? We're translating a book or a paper or an article together. But by doing it together, instead of just getting the right information, which you would get if we simply translated it and gave it to you, that's what you would get. But what you get by being here with us first, we get help from you guys, which we love. Okay, we love. Um, <laughs> you guys have helped us out with wording, trying to find like, oh, what's the correct word for this? We explain the concept, boom, you guys flood us with great suggestions, we love that. But also what you get is kind of to a look inside where this confusion comes from, which gives you future tools to understand and have like little warning bells when there might be future confusion, you're going to get a more instinctive, innate sense of what is Chinese tea and where these things come from. And that's what I was getting. I loved it. And then we thought, well, how can we share it? This is how we share it. It's awesome. Okay, guys. So Instagram people head over to YouTube for the full meal deal. Mm. So we continue on the China tea book written by Jianli Wu, my mom. And uh, this is the second last episode, mm -hmm. as you guys mentioned. Uh, it's a great book with lots of uh, great information, touches on almost really every good. detail aspect of Chinese tea from the, and offering a Chinese perspective. So it's kind of a, a interesting for us who have been uh, drinking tea and learning about tea more from the English world. Mm. Uh, great chance for us to organize our information knowledge a bit. And like you mentioned, that it's great for both of us to get our language kind of lined up. Yep. Terminology and just all of that jazz. Mm. So, um, I'm gonna start brewing. Yes, yes, awesome. That is great. So, for the folks on Instagram, oh, I wanted to say that the not only are we doing this on YouTube and the intro on Instagram, but if you check the link down below in the YouTube description, hint, hint, Instagram people jump over to YouTube right away. <laughs> We're signing out really soon on Instagram. The finished translation, the link is down below for all the episodes and it is a great resource whether you're a beginner or advanced or if you, even if you've already watched and been with us for all these episodes, you can go back to that and you know, if you're like, oh, I forget about this or I forget about that or even you just go back and check it out again. I find with this book, 
it's a reference. It's something mm. I can go back to and I'm, if I'm at level A, it helps me get to level B. But if I'm at level C, there's new stuff I see that I didn't see before because I couldn't catch it at level A. I hope that makes sense. Anyway, Instagram, signing out. We're Brewing Show May. Oh. I hope you're brewing something delicious. Jump over to YouTube. We're going to hit episode 35 of this Sunday Tea Book. Bye-bye. In the video. Oh, that smells so good. Share. I just want to show you guys again and show off my focus Oh, great ability. focus skills. Yes, here we go. Uh, just want to mention, we call that the show me because I just feel like it's a simpler. We could call that a go me if you like, as some people's uh, criteria is if there's <laughs> buds or no buds or how's the fuzz situation. Um, it's just uh, what we call that, but there's buds, there's still fuzz. When I smell that, it was still very rich, that uh, hair, hair, <laughs> that uh, white tea. That unique, that uh, the fuzz smell, fuzz smell, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, everybody who's here regularly knows exactly what I'm doing, and I'm just gonna complain about Instagram. So I'll save it. Oh, Instagram, you dog. <laughs> yeah. So show me, and yes, um, right. And if you are curious about what is show me, what is go me, we had uh, explain that quite uh, in quite a detail in mm. our white tea episode yeah a few episodes yeah. ago mm -hmm. and i won't rinse it for the same reason that there's a you know those precious fuzz same reason as the green oh, we tea can spread out or... a little bit now we're not on instagram anymore oh yeah i like to be crowded with you but i just you know you're brewing so okay. all right guys so you know what's coming you're probably waiting for it you're hyped up you're jazzed up you're brewing your tea, you're getting the tea, you're getting tea drunk, and now it's time for, I'm gonna dive in. Mm. Now it is, I gotta say, now it is, tea trivia, trivia. time. <sighs> Holy cow, this is a lot to manage. Do that, come back here. All right guys, tea trivia is starting up in, uh, you get T -T -T. to. TTT. <laughs> TTT. T cubed is starting in 20 seconds, guys. This is all about having fun. Take a guess. You just put in the number uh, one through four, A to D. I don't remember if it's a number or a letter because I never answer the questions. I make the questions. I try to fool you guys, but it's all in the spirit of good fun. So the first question's coming up in one second. Get your brains warmed up. Take a sip of tea and here we go. <laughs> These are the seven essentials in Chinese life. Typo, right in the first question. I'm gonna get busted. <laughs> gonna get busted by Cindy. Is it one, fuel, rice, oil, salt, sugar, vinegar, and tea? I gotta speed up, I don't have much time to go through these. Two, fuel, rice, oil, salt, sauce, vinegar, and tea. Is it three, fuel, rice, fat, salt, sugar, wine, and tea? Or is it four, fuel, cars, airplanes, Xbox, laptops, mobile phones, and tea? <laughs> Hope you like that last one. All right, so here we go. JS loves the applause. Yeah, I threw the crowd going wild in at the end because I know you're doing that at home, but I needed to hear it here, so I put it in for myself. I hope you guys like it too. These seven essentials of Chinese life. As the time winds down and we head on to the next screen where we're calculating the results, don't panic, have no fear. You still have some time to slide your answer in under the wire. However, know that time is running out and soon the answers will be tabulated and your number entry will no longer count. All right, we've got lots of answers coming in for one and two, it looks like, one slightly in the lead. Even, even Jen is struggling with this one because it is, <laughs> it is tricky as hell. What's the difference between one and two? <laughs> and there it is, folks. The difference between one and two is, uh, what is the difference? Is sugar, uh, sugar versus sauce. Okay, that's a tricky one, okay? Because everybody loves sugar and I did get a few of you guessing one. Victor with a clever response of eight. Um, however, you guys mm -hmm. who guessed two did a great job. Is that still computing the results? I don't know. It seems to have not computed the results. Guys, I'm sorry about the results computation. I don't know what's gone wrong, but we're on to the next question. China's national drink is one, tea, two, bubble tea, three, baijiu, or four, spring water. What is Chinese national, what is China's national drink? 
Josh says, I remember thinking sauce was a super original inclusion when I first learned about the list. Mm, good one, super Josh. Super original inclusion. Yeah, remember when you first told me, I'm like, what the heck is sauce? Is that like gravy? And because uh, it's it, st it sticks out for us. It's not a regular, oh. anyway, really original. And it means I, more like a fermented sauce, not just mm, a sauce you make yeah, up. Yeah, that's right, like bean paste or... Yeah, um, yeah, like those. Um, what's the Japanese one we like? Miso, those mm. kind of things, right? Mm. All mm. right, so everybody is guessing one tea, even with a little duh tea from Fernanda. Good one, good one. Always good to mock the answers and have fun. That is the key to, to tea trivia time, is just to have some fun. I think this one is gonna knock your socks off. We got a few more seconds. And the correct answer is indeed <laughs> not tea. I don't know why the tabulation is broken, guys. I'm really bummed. I will look into it, but I know that many of you did get fooled by this one, and I don't think anybody guessed by Joe. Nobody guessed by Joe. The actual national drink of China is, unfortunately, from my perspective, but maybe not if you're a Baijiu producer, Baijiu, which is their white alcohol. I hope the final result will still show. Yeah, I'm no, I highly doubt it, but we'll no. see. We'll see. Oh. Stay tuned. Don't run away if you're here just for the results, which I doubt. China spread to modern China. Ay, oh, it's supposed to say tea. <laughs> Sorry, guys, the, the question is wrong in this case. Tea spread to modern day Korea, Vietnam, and Japan during this dynasty. Okay, China didn't spread to modern day Korea, <laughs> Vietnam, or Japan. Okay, forget about that. It sounds so political. It's supposed to be tea. Tea spread to modern day Korea, <laughs> Vietnam, and Japan during this dynasty. Is it one, the Song Dynasty, two, the Tang Dynasty, three, the Western Han Dynasty, or four, the Jing Dynasty? Have some tea is so good. Really good. Oh my god. We just have. Oh, no, it's. No, it always said brewing your answers and then it goes oh, really? blank. Yeah, okay, and then it okay, goes okay. blank. So we got a few guesses. This one's a little bit more diverse in its guesses. We've got some guessing Song, some guessing Jing. We've got a guess for Tong from Time Signature MMA and I think possibly uh, uh, Simmerji, but that might have been the previous question. JS comes in with Tang Dynasty. Victor sticking with his oh. trusty answer 8. And the answer is indeed the Tang Dynasty. In fact, if you're into Japanese tea and that ceremony and all that jazz, it's very similar. I'm looking over to my authority for that, but it's really similar to Tang Dynasty. Uh, similar to Song Dynasty. Song Dynasty. Oh, my bad, my bad. Which came after. Hmm? Yeah. Mm, right. But I think... All right. Guys, we have... Oh, we're not even at the final question. This is so awesome. There's tons of questions here. Tea plants produce caffeine too. One, make people happy. Two, wake us up. Three, metabolize sugars, or four, fend off pests. So why do tea plants make caffeine? Why do they produce caffeine? It certainly does, one, make me happy, two, wake <laughs> me up. It doesn't help me metabolize sugar, as far as I know. And if anything, it attracts pests when I brew tea. Just kidding. <laughs> oh, I'm getting in trouble. All right, Lolo, hey, welcome to the stream. Didn't see you there yet, so I'm gonna take a chance to say hi, and you can still slide your answer in under the wire here, folks. Why do tea plants produce caffeine? I can see tons of people guessing four. We've got a guess for three as well from Reiner. Uh, mostly four, it looks like, from the whole crowd. Ah, Mr. Amemnon comes in with three. Beirong goes with four. And any moment now, we will have the correct answer, but I'm gonna hold my tongue until that time. Betty guesses four, and indeed four is the correct answer. And unfortunately, again, no summation of results. What a bummer, don't know what happened. Did you watch a lot of Jeopardy? Um, I did watch a lot of Jeopardy back in the day. I even remember the Ken Dynasty. That's not a <laughs> Japanese dynasty, that was a guy who rocked Jeopardy. All right, guys, here we go. Final question of tea trivia time. Porcelain was invented during, another dynasty question, during the one, Tang Dynasty, two, Song Dynasty, three, Ming Dynasty, four, Qing Dynasty. When was porcelain invented? Do, 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 do. You asked about Jeopardy, that's the Jeopardy song. Oh. Um, I never watched that. So Josh that. says for the previous question, 
Josh says for the previous question, which was about caffeine, definitely four, but with the example of Baiha Oolong, we can see how well that worked. Ha <laughs> ha. What does this word mean? Ma Ma masochist, uh, like, masochist, like pain on, on yourself. The Ken Dynasty, ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, Cindy <sighs> remembers the Ken Dynasty. Nobody who watched Jeopardy forgets the Ken Dynasty. A few moments left to get your answers in, folk. When was porcelain invented? Tung Song Ming or Qing Dynasty. Here we go. I see lots of guesses for three. Tricky one, I think. This will be an interesting... This is an interesting topic for people, I think. Three, lots of guesses for three. Victor sticking with eight all the way through. I wonder if eight broke my answers. Maybe eight broke them. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not blaming you, Victor, and it really doesn't matter. We really are here just for the fun. You guys know how you did. That's all that's important. And uh, more important, just that we have fun. So it was the Tang Dynasty, later in the Tang Dynasty when porcelain was invented. Mm -hmm. And they figured out that critical little mineral that needed to go in there to make porcelain so delicate and, ratio. and fine. And the ratio. Not just a mineral. I'm not surprised Phil likes Jeopardy. Ha ha. Me neither. Also, ha ha. All right, so there's the results for you guys. It is a blank screen. Things didn't quite go as planned, so we're going to cut away back to the main scene. I'm going to jiggle the camera vigorously into position because I'm, uh, I don't know, I'm just, that's me. You know, I'm not delicate. Oh, was that the results there? Uh -huh. No. That's just a... Oh. A result yeah. page. Darn, I was hoping I could just maybe read them out to you, but the whole thing just went for a botch. I moved the leg so it won't boom, boom, boom. Right? If you've been Didn't with us work. before... Did you notice I'm slightly, slightly, slightly okay, going come away? Back, come back, come back, come back. Okay. <sighs> All right, guys, that was tea trivia... Pardon me. Tea <laughs> trivia time for episode 35 of Sunday Tea Book. I don't know what it sounds like from your end, but from my end, it felt like you swallow a whole stone. A whole to the stone. Wall. Well, you know, I was once told that it is better to swallow a whole stone than to try to chew it. <laughs> Wise words. It's Wise not words. Not an English saying, is it? That is a Phil saying. I just that's a saying as of right now. Okay, everybody, it is wiser to swallow mm -hmm. a whole stone than to try to chew it. That actually has some sort of meaning, right? Take the pain, swallow it. Don't try to break that down when it's unbreakable. You know what I mean? Mm, that's pretty profound. Okay, T Sunday Tea Book doesn't usually get this profound. <laughs> I have to say that was wow. I'm still kind of reeling. Shocked by yourself. I'm reeling from that one, yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Great work. Thank you for participating in Sunday Tea Book. I mean, in Tea Trivia time. <laughs> Sunday Tea Book is just getting started. Tea Trivia is over. And... Um, Somebody said, uh, Josh says, OMFG, tongue again. Yes, tongue again. Duck Dynasty, nice. That's a TV show, I think. Um, uh, on, uh, it's a cartoon. I'm not surprised if Phil likes Jeopardy. I think we're good then. I think we're mm. caught up. I think it's good the tabulation is broken. I only got two correct. <laughs> <laughs> good one, Cindy. We're, I broke it just for you. Usually yeah. you're right up at the top, top, number one, number two on the leaderboard. So I kept it, uh, I kept it secret today. <laughs> Reiner for Good me one. too, Cindy. Yeah, because uh, Reiner also wasn't so sad about that. It's just fun to participate. Yeah, it's Sometimes just fun. Sometimes don't want to see the results. Oh, Mr. Remembron said it sounded like a hairball. <laughs> sounded like I swall <laughs> swallowed a hairball like a cat. Very amusing. Very That's amusing. fine. That's all fine. And um, deep. So the, my little quote was deep. With great tea comes great responsibility. Nice one, Betty. That's good. That's good. That's getting up, getting close to time signatures, quality of quip. Josh says, LMAO, Phil, but what if someone chokes on it or causes issues internally? Perhaps a broken tooth is better than a broken gastrointestinal system. Well, I would say you're right, except that yours doesn't roll off the tongue as well. So I win. <laughs> Too much by Joe for sure. No, I'm completely sober, I assure you. Okay, see my eyes? Completely white. All right, Clifford Little, Shomei is by Cha until it is three years old, then it is Hey Cha. Well, like Michael Jackson's song, it doesn't matter if you're black or white. <laughs> okay, okay, that was gold. That was gold right there, Clifford. That was gold. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. That is great. All right, so, and Mr. Amemnon, I've just started drinking tea and I feel like I'm standing in front of a big, of a big and complex mountain of different tea. Yeah, it is, but it's also delightful, so don't worry. Igor, hey, oh, welcome. Hey. Yes, you missed the trivia. I'm so sorry about that, but you know what? 
don't worry. It was, uh, it was all fun and we'll, there will be one next week, so no worries there. Uh, fairy Wars is much more poetic. Mm. <laughs> all right, guys. We're heading over to the book. We are into part three. Here we go now. You think I can fix that here? I think so. Oh, oh, yeah, you can fit it there. I just move a few things. I thought you were trying to show them to be funny. I was like, oh, that'll be funny. Let's just show them the book and read it. No, we've got the book right on the what screen. Is funny? We are ultra high tech here. All right, and I'm going to start. So guys, here we are. As Jen said in the intro, we're reading through China Tea. We are down. Oh, let's show them the book. Come on. Let's go to the Discord cam. We'll talk about the Discord a little bit. So guys, the Discord is super fun. You guys make it super fun. So sign up there. There's a code there, but I just want to show you how far along. This is the finished side here, really thick. And this is what's left, really thin, okay? Two episodes. Super excited about that. You guys have been with us all the way. We love you guys for that. Head on down to the description in the YouTube, pull up the uh, finished translation, it is there. There is a link there so you can follow along. I am going to um, head over back to the book and I am going to first show you the beginning and how far we got. So I showed you in page thickness, but here is the whole table of contents. We've gone through part one. We've gone through part two, which covered all the different tea categories and dive into the individual sort of super famous teas in each category. And now we have finally arrived at part three, talk about tea, tea and life. And here we go. I'll go by the beautiful picture slowly, take it in. Notice I use paper clips to hold the book still while I scan it. I don't know if anybody noticed that, but I'm pointing it out right now. That's gonna be a trivia question later, okay? <laughs> Why not, right? All right, guys, here we go. And you'll see I get a little inspiration from the book for the trivia. Any final questions before I dive in? All right, here we go. There are seven things that you must deal with. Fuel, rice, oil, salt, soy sauce, vinegar, and tea. It shows that tea is everywhere in our life. Zhao Wei Ren, a poet of Qing Dynasty, whose book, Liang Po Poems, had written that books, paintings, Musical instruments, poems, wine, and flowers were the things around him every day. However, things changed to the seven, which added tea. All right, I think let's just unpack that. That's a short, cute little section, but it's, it's kind of just an intro, and I think it's easy to unpack. So there were the seven things, okay, with soy sauce. I kind of abbreviated that to sauce because I felt like soy sauce was a little bit wrong, a little bit too specific. It's kind of in the fermented sauce group, right? But, All those fermented, like mm -hmm. uh, uh, soil, bean paste, bean paste mm -hmm. might be the, how we call that nowadays yeah. in English, and other fermented uh, sauce, fermented paste and stuff. But you can see what a peaceful people these were when those are their essentials. Most of them revolving <laughs> around awesome. either the preparation of food, fuel to start a fire, to cook food, and mm -hmm. the rest of them are literally all food, all food. So everything you need in life is food and something to heat it up with. That's it, you're gold. So what else? Um, I was gonna ask you a question. I think right. not, it's not really a translation thing, but it's a curious thing because these seven things, you told me about these a while ago. Mm -hmm. And my question is, is that like, does everybody in China know the seven essentials? Is it like- Pretty much, it's almost like saying. Okay. And uh, this guy called Zha uh, Weiren, and uh, this poem he wrote, it, it doesn't, a poem is really hard to uh, translate. So basically, the, the two things that's interesting in this is to point out one element, which is the seven essentials, right? Uh, what mm -hmm. we just mentioned, like fuel, rice, oil, and mm -hmm, tea, mm -hmm. and all that. Another, that all, we often call that a su shi, means those are more, uh, not so low end, but it's more common things or more ah. essential thing like a, uh, like the commoner items, like yes, but yeah. it's essential no matter which class, class you're in. Or right? Which, Everybody needs yes. it. Yes. Yeah. While the other sets that he mentioned in the poem, sort of down the, here, books, paintings. Yes, we call that ya shi. Uh, means uh, oh. is uh, can understand like elegant stuff. 
you know, talking about flowers and talking about books and paintings and uh, those kind of stuff. So uh, these are more like old times, like the more educated people or right. upper class would play with kind of thing. This uh, this poem itself is more reflected to this guy's life has changed from used to be just playing with those to wow. nowadays I have to care about daily lives kind of thing. But it also points out at that time, which is from Qing Dynasty, uh, uh, tea has already been a daily essential for people. Right. Mm. And is and it was is it trying to say that it and made its way into both groups? Mm, not much. No. Okay. Okay. Stretching, guys. I'm just stretching. All right. Great. So I'll do the next section. We'll come back for comments in a while. We'll come back for comments in a while. We'll go by that Ooh, quickly, quickly. Tea telling. All right. Quickly, quickly. Tea telling. Tea is the national drink. All right. So you guys are like, hey, why did you tell us it was by Joe? Hang on. We'll get there. Okay. Calm down. Um, try not to jiggle the mouse too much. Okay. Although it is innominate in our history, it is true that tea is the national drink. In the far ancient times, our ancestors had already started to use tea. Shenong was the first man who discovered and used tea. It was said that Shenong had tasted hundreds of herbs and was detoxified by tea after his poisoning. Ooh, a little bit misspelled. During the long initially period, tea had been used as medicine. Until the Qing and Han period, because more man-made tea bushes had been done, People found it could make them exciting, and tea making and tea drinking became popular. During the West Han Dynasty, China had formed tea custom and the market had been formed. While in Jing Dynasty, tea had been very common in the South, and tea ceremony, tea custom, and tea philosophy had been formed in Tang Dynasty. Tea culture became the main part of people's spiritual life. The civilians regarded tea as salt and rice, whereas the literati regarded tea as elegance, and tea became the national drink. Lu Yu's book of tea in Tang Dynasty had become the first tea encyclopedia, which summarized the experience of tea production and drinking, and created the, the a set of tea science, tea art, and thoughts of tea ceremony. Even today, it has great practical value. Josh, calm down. Lu Yu is also known as the first tea artist in the history. <laughs> tea has the highest position in Song Dynasty when it has reached its peak. And the tea sets had become luxurious since Ming and Qing Dynasty. They were skillful, sand-fired pots and various porcelain sets. The exquisite tea sets had been to common people's home. Tea has a long history. Tea, as well as silk and porcelain, has become a symbol of Chinese civilization. All righty. So, tea is the national drink. So just like porcelain and silk, you know, it's unofficial. It's not, it's just like the national sport of Canada isn't hockey. A lot of people think it's hockey. Huh? Yeah, it's not hockey. What a lot of that? people think it's hockey. It's lacrosse. Mm. What is that? It's a, it's a really cool sport where they use a long stick with a basket on it to throw a ball. It's super fast paced and super violent. Sorry, everybody. Um, but yeah, the, the, the on the books national oh. sport of Canada is lacrosse, also appearing in tea trivia quite shortly. Okay. But uh, yeah, so the, the official that. national drink of China is by Joe, but the de facto national drink of China is of course tea. Cool. Ta-da! All right, so I had to explain myself. I felt like I might be attacked in the comments if I didn't come clean when the book clearly says it's tea. I don't even know if by Joe is right, okay? I got that from the internet, so for all I know it is tea, but, or maybe they have several tiers of national drink, okay? So if I'm wrong, sue me. Don't really sue me. <laughs> back to the book, guys, back to the book. So that was the first thing, tea is a national drink. I had to clear the air with that. All right, so. Innominate. I had no idea what this meant, so I had to look it up. So I thought I would share it with you. Innominate means not named or classified. 
And then once you, I looked it up, I was like, wow. Oh, nominate? It sounds exactly, it means exactly what it says. <laughs> a nominate, not named or classified. Um, I guess that's saying what I said, although it's not like kind of official, but tea is the national drink. So anyway, that threw me off. Um, there's a little thing about Shenong here. So I wanted to just point out without diving back into all the sort of, um, mm -hmm. so it's not, you know, I represent kind of the newcomer to tea, but we covered Shenong in pretty good depth. It was actually, if I'm not mistaken, episode one, I had a look at the book. It mm -hmm. is the very first thing in the book. Yep. And we talked a bit about that mythology and that sort of discovery story of tea. Very interesting stuff. So if you're curious about that and you're just new to Sunday Tea Book and you've caught us kind of at the end of the book, jump back to episode one to dive mm -hmm. into what exactly is Shenong all about. Very, very cool stuff. Um, especially vis-a-vis -vis this, you know, this legend and, you know, did he do that all by himself or is, does he represent blah, blah, blah. Episode one. Excellent. All right. And uh, I really like this. I honestly don't have many translation hiccups here. Let, let us know, you guys out there, if you found something confusing in the text that I uh, so carefully and eloquently read out, just let us know, you know, what, what section it is that you're like, what? But I found right. this was pretty good, right? It's pretty um, good. The ex uh, just a few things I feel like uh, exciting, right? It's in town, tea makes people excited, <laughs> right, which means cute. awakening, caffeine effect. Right, it Make you revs them up. Yes. Right. Yes. Where was that again? Yeah. Second, uh, end of the second line. That paragraph. Ah, right. Yeah. And uh, it was used as medicine, like the Chinese medicine. Mm. Uh, uh, herb? Herb? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Tea. Prior to that, right? And then it's yes. kind of, they figured out, hey, we can brew this up into a drink. Yes. It's going to help me get up in the morning. Yeah. So, which means at that time, people don't drink that so every day, so much. Mm -hmm. and, right. Uh, but you see that sort of movement from medicine towards drink. Mm. So they start drinking it. Western Han. Because we're going to talk about tea mm. and health and a little bit. And at the end, I want to circle back and explain why it was primary use of medicine. Okay, cool, cool. But yeah, and so that was my other comment was mm -hmm. we see the sort of in this paragraph, we see T's progression or at the end of this so paragraph. So basically this page is all mostly talking about the T, a brief, brief history of T yeah. development, yeah. right? And uh, till the Xi, uh, West Han Dynasty, which is around uh, 200, uh, oh. uh, 200 BC-ish. Mm. Um, they start to have a custom of drinking tea, right. like, and some uh, tea custom already developed. And there's the tea market. That is more just more economically a symbol of something that forms. yeah something like the become... first uh, you know bell rather than yeah, sil yeah. silver or gold that kind of a meaning yeah and. Then, I was going to mention too, like all the, you can see there's a history here, but mm -hmm. I'm, it's a little bit hard for me to know where, where I am in time because these, the dynasty notation is, I think you, right. you're more familiar with it yeah. and um, native Chinese are more familiar with what that means temporally. Whereas for, I had no idea West Han was so early, 200 BC. Yeah. And because of mm -hmm. that time, there's more, uh, there's more man here. It says man-made tea plant right which means like we cultivated tea cultivated. bushes yeah. yeah we plant it no. rather than we go and collect like right. uh, the form of a uh, getting tea is transforming right was transforming at that time and that helps with the popularity of tea right and the processing and everything now you have time to do stuff with it because you didn't spend all your time going to find it mm-hmm and then we Go to the Jin Dynasty, which is around the two, three hundred, ish. Like that period lasts for quite a while. Later on, it become like Mulan. We talk about that uh, three, four right. hundred A.D. Right. <laughs> kind of time. So in that time, uh, tea become quite popular, and is in the south, in the north, it's still because tea doesn't quite grow there. It's not as popular mm. or stuff. Right. It's a very interesting dynasty. It, uh, the time, like, uh, you know, doing drugs and uh, doing crazy things are considered... Drugs? 
Yeah, yeah. It's which which dynasty are we talking about? Jin Dynasty. Whoa. You know, crazy and Jin men people. dress up like a really feminine, doing makeups. Wow. And uh, you know, there's uh, naked people running around. Pretty modern, actually. It really, to could say. Be, yes, very. Like, like to not urban, to say crazy ish yeah. urban. Especially for the time period. Yeah, because lots of people talk about China, talk about tradition, long China and stuff. They're more like, oh, everything is uh, very um, reserved. Yeah, extremely reserved conservative. and extremely conservative mm. because a lot of us, when contact with China, was more like a late Qing Dynasty mm. that era. But right. before that, there are so such a long history. They're so different in each time zone, time zone, time uh, time frame, frame, era, epoch. That's mm. a that's an interesting thing too because we always I think there's a tendency for us or for, at least for myself to feel like we're always moving forward. Mm -hmm. But we've talked about this with regards to craft, like various crafts or trades, and it also applies to culture. There's not just a, it's especially something like this that's so subjective, is not just forward motion though. Things move back and forth a little bit too, right? Like mm. in terms of openness or conservativeness. Mm -hmm. But we also talked about it in terms of, and it's come up with tea too, where certain processing skills have been lost just like certain cultural attitudes have been lost or have been changed, changed or yeah. transformed. Yeah. And those things go away. And then that's one of the fun things is when you try to revive them, you're never a hundred percent sure. Am I nailing this down? Mm. When we're trying, when we sometimes try to revive these old teas or stuff. Anyway, I just wanted to tie it in with tea, but you know what I mean? <laughs> All right. Great job. So, um, yeah. And then it peaks up around <coughs> Tang, of course, Lu Yu. And then after Tang is Song, I think. Yeah, uh, Tom Dynasty. Yes, yes. I think that, that part is a pretty. I think it gets clear. pretty clear here. Yeah. yeah, and then it just it's a drink. Then, and then... it's a song. Yeah, mm -hmm. and Tom Dynasty. I just want to throw in some little things because if we just say Dynasty A B C D, and you guys might not have quite an idea what what those mm. Tom Dynasty is around uh, six hundred B C yeah. on. Eighty. Uh, Eighty. Eighty. Sorry. Mm. Sorry. Eighty. And uh, it's uh, one of the uh, like uh, Tao Chinese are really proud of this dynasty because mm. it's uh, even like Chinatown in Chinese we call that Tang Ren Jie, Tang People Street. Mm. You know the like Tang Han Han Dynasty Han Tang is almost the symbol of Chinese people, and they're very they're very big, um, and very open. You know, girls dress up in boys' costume. The costume, like clothes. Yeah, what you mean, I think, is it's uh, kind of like today. Ladies wear pants. It's not a big deal, right? Like mm -hmm. the the clothing. Riding horses, playing. Mm. What's that? Uh, like a golf on a horse? How do you call Polo. it? Polo. Polo. Yeah, playing those and uh, uh, quite open. And you have foreigners uh, come to the central government to be the high officials mm. and stuff like that. It's a very right. foreigners were getting. Um, uh, appointed into positions of actual power. Mm -hmm. wow, really cool. Uh, so it's a very open, very uh, powerful, and uh, in terms of a cultural everything, liberal, you might say, pretty liberal. Quite mm. a liberal mm. uh, dynasty. Very. I meant to say something, but I forgot. And it flourished. Uh, you know, maybe I don't know uh, how true it is, but it, maybe it was other factors. But it's maybe that's one of the reasons it flourished. Mm. Cool. All right, and then uh, peaks. It peaks in Song Dynasty, which is, I guess, when it. Crossed. I'm trying to throw in those funny things about the oh. dynasty. You might not like. Uh, if yeah. you look it up, it might not be the first thing on the title you will see on yeah, Wikipedia yeah. Are... and stuff. Those are more official things. I'm just throwing little fun facts yeah, that we wouldn't think of when we talk about uh, those right. old times and stuff. Mm -hmm. mm. No, I think people love those. Let us know if you love to hear about those things. I always love to hear about those, especially those nuances about the, uh, the common day people. So in the Tang Dynasty, though, there was something here I had a question about. Mm -hmm. um, so it explains here, mm -hmm. tea culture became a main part of people's life. Uh, spiritual life. Yeah, spiritual life. Mm -hmm. Right. Here's what I mean. The civilians regarded tea as salt and rice, which to me sounds like the everyday people. It's a yes. necessity. It's it's a, something they need to put on the table and drink every day. And the upper class, the literati, uh, to me, I read that as the upper class. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, regarded as the elegant drink. It kind of is related to what you said earlier. Is that pretty much straight yes. up how it is? Nobles, yes. it's, it's, it's permeating both nobles and commoners yes. list of things I need to have. Yeah. Just maybe for different reasons, but yeah. it's there. Okay, so that's great. And, and of course, this is how, even though my question was a little bit tricky, that it was not, not technically the national drink of China, it's definitely a drink that we all associate with China. We even have expressions for the tea in China. You know, we say all the tea in China. It's like if something is, uh, if there's a lot of something, you know, right, right. we use that expression. Cause yeah, I just want to just uh, quickly uh, mention that because you talked about porcelain and when that was first, it was a late Tang Dynasty. Mm. And uh, that's the time, like Tang Dynasty, uh, people drink tea with all kinds of uh, stuff in it, right? So put some salt, mm. put some mm. sugar, put some uh, <laughs> uh, chai, star anise, yeah, star anise those all spices. those stuff. Yeah. That's the time, and that's the, that dynasty also has a lot of influence on people around. A lot of, like if, if you go to the west of China, that Middle East area, that whole zone, a lot of them still would have putting, uh, you know, spices in tea to mm. drink, uh, still mm. through have that, uh, 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 that chai vibe. That, yeah, that chai, the custom, custom, custom. Mm -hmm. Custom. Which one? Custom, okay. Mm. And then uh, started to influence the Korea and uh, Japan. Well, there's tea plants going over and the right. Song Dynasty is more officially that the tea ceremony, the matcha thing goes all the way over that's when so people in Song Dynasty drink tea, do those powdering stuff. Mm. And Song Dynasty is a very cool dynasty. Uh, what are the funny things? They're really interested in making doing businesses. That's the oh, time, really? the peak of our uh, the Sea Silk Road. Right. Yeah, they do a lot of those. The so that you, you the nautical Silk Road. You mean like the not the nautical. Okay. Yeah, sure. No, this, but you said by sea, so I caught that. Yes, yeah. yes. So not the traditional overland Silk Road, but the, uh, the by sea or the nautical Silk Road was prospering. Yes. So lots of export, yes. lots of import. Yeah, very weak in terms of a military because uh, the, the kind of a man government got bullet going south and south with a lot of uh, northern uh, peoples in the north. Mm. and. But there's a lot of way they do trade to, to maintain peace, but their art in terms of art aesthetic are the peak mm. throughout Chinese history. Even though in terms of the skills, uh, how to make like a porcelain skills or a lot of things, uh, it peaks in Qing Dynasty. But right. in terms of aesthetic, like if you look at a vase, despite all the, you know, the material, just the shape, there's premium ones and right. uh, you know less aesthetic ones that kind of thing so song dynasty they nailed the golden ratio yes <laughs> yes <laughs> and they uh funny thing they are uh, those people so those officials are really well paid and uh, their city is very uh the concept is very modern they can right. happy 24 hours right no curfews no and curfews, not too much crime. It's pretty safe to go out. Yeah, mm. and uh, if you live in the capital, uh, and what was you, the time frame here? Uh, around, uh, around the um, yeah, prox nine hundred, eight nine hundred to twelve hundred ish. That dynasty is almost like a three hundred. Okay. All together, and if you live in the capital, uh, you don't you can buy almost everything. People mm. don't even need to boil water at home. I can go next door and I can buy hot water. Wow. Like the, the, the daily life is very convenient. Right. And that right. time they have those super fancy, uh, big restaurants that service everything. Wow. Yeah, it's very cool. It's almost like, a, you know, several big buildings just for that restaurant. Which kind of like today, but I think about it. It was back uh, 800, 900 to, to, what did you say? 800 to 1200 ish kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty fun. And if you like porcelain, you know, that's a major porcelain mm. time, a big transition happening in that time too. Anyways. Awesome. 
Yeah. So I think that covers that. I'm gonna go out <laughs> I for feel some. Like I attacked too much. No, no, that was great. I'm gonna go out for some comments here. So let's see where were we here. Da, 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 da. <laughs> Mr. Well, MM non. I'm not that necessarily at the top right. though. Oh yeah, I'm pretty close here. Um, Mr. Memnon said he had just started drinking tea and I was standing, I'm in a big complex mountain of tea. I made a joke and we went, went to the book. Then we say, um, he says, any idea how to start and go through the 100,000 or 1 million different teas? And uh, Victor says, category of teas are sometimes rather arbitrary. Tea Signature MMA says, you just got to drink the tea you enjoy. I totally, totally agree with that. That's a great way to start. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Try a little bit of everything, figure out what you like the most and drill down there for a while. And eventually your tastes are going to develop and change and you're going to, you're going to find, you're going to wander around. And I think that's a fine way to do it. I, I, I would hesitate to say there's a strictly correct method to approach tea if you're brand new, because unless you're some kind of tea, like, I don't know. Tea, what is T4? You have to come back to what is T4. What is T4 is what government wants at the end of the tax year. What? Anyway, it's for We're enjoying. We're talking about T4. I just... Oh, nobody knows <laughs> that sorry. except Canadians. Sorry. <laughs> okay, that was a Canadian tax joke. Our slip at the end of the year is called a T4. <laughs> where we have to declare our income anyway anyway <laughs> so just because so many of you are from canada all the canadians are rolling their eyes and everybody else is Lame scratching joke. their head very very good one it was a really good one ha, ha. okay so but you have to come back to what is t4 and it's to enjoy so really mm. it's about drill into the spot you enjoy and i think the door will open and you're open-minded and drink everything you'll start to enjoy that. everything um and um, the only other tip I'd give you is give everything a chance, even if you don't enjoy it. Uh, maybe try it a couple more times because you never know if it was something you ate then or whatever. Um, try it again. And if it still doesn't work, wait a year and try it again kind of thing. So Fernand and Mr. Remnon, go white first. Okay, we got some really good direction there too. Like really try it, try it all. Ah, uh, soy sauce, time signature, MMA. Mm. Mm. Mr. Remnon, Reiner. Oh, I, that's German. Can't read that. Hecha holiday. I cook with dubang jiang all the time. Dobang oh, dubang jiang. Uh, bean paste. Mm. Right. Cindy says uh, HH, which is, I don't know who that is. I recently, oh, Hecha holiday. HH. I recently bought my first jar of dubang jiang as I'm getting into Sichuan cooking. Not sure how I went 63 years without it. Me neither. <laughs> but you found it and it's never too late. And the next thing you got to pick up is some uh, Sichuan um, peppercorn oil and or make your own with Sichuan peppercorn. Hit us on the Reddit for instructions how to do that. Then um, there's nothing like venison cooked with do, do jiang. Mm, I believe it. Mm. It kind of makes everything better. And I think, I wanna talk about this for a while. So do, do, do ban jiang is, is a fermented bean paste. And it comes in a bunch of sort of different varieties, different flavorings, different intensities. Um, but before I met you, I didn't eat much uh, fermented food. And I think it's a really healthy, good, it's delicious. You got to watch it. They're really salty. So you don't just dump in a, you know, a big ton of it. But really good. Um, like we think of shu puara is good for our gut. Similarly, I really think that using you know, miso, fermented bean paste, uh, there's a ton of fermented soy products in the Chinese diet. I think they're really healthy for you. Mm. Just you some... can try that as a salad dressing if you are into mm. salad. Like yes. Just a sesame oil, uh, a little bit of doubanjiang and a little bit of vinegar. Oh. Depends on which brand yes. you bought the doubanjiang. Uh, you can put a touch of the sugar. Yeah, but full recipe right depend, here, okay? Depends on Cherry what tomatoes, what? slice in half. Um, Anything. I like, I like Bocacini, the wood. slice in half, throw them in a bowl. Oh yeah. Fermented yeah. bean paste, a bit of sesame oil, a bit of sugar, stir, eat gold. Okay. <laughs> really lovely summer little dish. And why is that important? Why do I think those things are really healthy? And I think the most important takeaway in the West, the attempts. So first in the West, there's this notion that healthy has to be disgusting. And second, <laughs> there's this notion that healthy isn't disgusting when it is. 
Like tons of healthy foods in the West are so gross and so flavorless and so cardboard-like and they're insisting how delicious they are. No, they're not delicious. So healthy doesn't have to be gross. Uh, it can be bean paste and salty. You just got to use the right portions. Okay, that's what I wanted to say about that. Um, okay, back to the comments. If tea is indeed, anyway, where was I? There's nothing like venison. Yeah, lacrosse is awesome. Yes, it is so totally awesome. It should be, it should totally be a major league sport. Um, I live to watch. Anyway, ops, bad word. Anyway, oops, bad word. Sorry, Cindy. Huh? I missed something. If tea is indeed the national drink, we can all add a point to our TTT score. <laughs> it's not. Okay? <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. You can add one if you want, okay? But I'm just saying. <laughs> I I'm love how it's mean. <laughs> right? I'm so mean. <laughs> I keep misreading it as West Ham. <laughs> West Ham. <laughs> Somebody's hungry. They need some West Ham. You don't have that East Ham when you can have West Ham. Time Signature says, sounds like they had lots of fun back in those Jing days. Yeah, yeah, those crazy Jing people and those crazy tongue people too. Or was it Song? I forget. So it's mixed all up. Very open then time. Cindy says, I need to make a timeline of Chinese dynasties. The fun facts are great. So Cindy, I was thinking the same thing. Let's tackle this on Discord. And I want to specifically the dynasties with sort of the T. <gasps> I the was nervous motion. for a moment. I was like, mm, he's adding job for me to do No, for no, him. no, no, I but think it's okay, though. we're going to do it on Discord. Me and the crew who's on Discord. So if you're not on Discord, jump on if you want some extra homework. <laughs> no, just kidding. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. I want to actually, I really want to capture sort of the evolution of T through the dynasties with some neat nuance. We'll do all the work. We'll just get you to check it. All you right. Want me? I can make you a big list. It's really quick, so save you some time to look those up. Oh, it'll be fun. Don't okay. do don't do it first. We'll remember better if we do it ourselves too. Mm -hmm. So Lolo says that's funny. Before I started to get deeper into tea, I only knew China for jasmine tea or gunpowder tea. Thought India to be the source. Crazy, yeah. Not crazy, you know. That's mm -hmm. a really common. Um, that's where most of our tea in the West comes from. Um, stolen from China back in the top day of 1600s, 1400s, I can't remember. Bob, whatever, Bob, whatever his name was, steals the plant. That was 1900s, pretty uh, late. Definitely not 19, but, uh, but I think you're right. I think it was, anyway, I don't know. Anyway, so then they start to grow tea and they methodize it. And <clears throat> that's where most of our tea comes from. So it's not crazy that that's what you thought. Um, and I said Bob, but I think his name was Robert something, but I might be totally wrong. I'm really weak on my, Indian tea history, but it was it was uh, smuggled out. I do know that was right. Little small leaf bush. Um, Clifford Little says porcelain became famous from Ming onwards due to being able to put the blue pattern without bleed. Hmm. Oh, what? It's uh, that that happens at the end of a. I was mean to end of a Song dynasty and the Yuan is a very short dynasty that's why it didn't have much chance to make an impact but they also have a Qinghua those the blue patterns ah, and right. their famous Yuan pieces nowadays doesn't leave, doesn't have much left they do huge ones you know Yuan dynasty or Mongol dynasty ah, like, uh, so, big, so stuff. <laughs> big stuff but really big because in early the mid Song even early Song dynasty we could not like the technology wasn't there to generous a rim bucket size of stuff right so a rain when, barrel right a rim barrel so when the yuan dynasty start to make a big ones even now in today's uh, market like uh, the, the antique market the yuan pieces are very expensive for their right. sizes and scared scared scale scary <laughs> what well, i mean like less in quantity scarcity scarcity mm. yes that's right. I thought they made scary patterns on because they were Mongols. <laughs> oh, no, Who knows? No, Maybe, like, no, no. no scarcity. <laughs> All right. So um, they order. They don't make that. Right. Right. That's good to mm. hear you saying that you should saying that you should just drink the tea you enjoy. Tea takes the pressure away from it for a new tea person. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Mm. And uh, Hecha Holiday says, do you like the Pisian dark style or the redder style? I don't know what that means. I think in Pixian Dou Bai Jiang. Pixian, oh. Pixian Dou Bai Jiang, usually... Mm, bean paste, like folks. We're back to bean paste. paste. If you ask... 
Like if you the question, I feel like a pixian means the red. That's the one that has red oil. Oh. Uh, but the regular one is dark one. Right, pixian is the spicier one. Yeah, that's a Sichuan mm. Sichuan dou bar jiang. Anyway, and talking we, about that, you have different styles all over. Yeah, yeah. There's China. tons. Uh, try them all. We love them both. We keep no less than three. No, we sometimes dip down to two different styles of bean paste in the fridge plus miso, but usually we keep at least three. Just because they they all they're different. They're different, and they a little bit can really turn your dish in this way or that. It's really neat. I really recommend people to grab some of that and start cooking with it. Even if you don't know much, just taste a little bit. Super salty, and you can guess. Are you traumatized? I feel like every time you say it, you no. I, I don't want people salty. to grab a spoon right. and taste it. Right. Yeah, you yeah. just put a little bit so you can get the salt level, and then you can start and throw that in any dish that you're making. It doesn't have to be an Asian dish. It's a it's, it's going to give your dish some depth, some really interesting depth and, and uh, dimension. All right. Uh, Clifford says, venison is dear. Try budgies. They go cheap. Haha, <laughs> good one. That was in the email. <laughs> oh, that's good. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a funny expression. But budgies go cheap, but it can be cheap or cheap. Time Signature MA says, fermented foods are good for your gut microbiome. Yeah. Oh. Holy stuff growing in my body, that man. I'm so not good at that. Okay, you're, you're the king of that time signature. You're the king of that. Cindy says, the glimpses I'm getting of your tea looks more golden than the 2013 Chomet cakes I'm drinking. Mine is more orangey. Does it get darker as it ages? Yes, yes it does. So ding, ding. ding. Yeah. Yep. This so is that's, a 2019 one. Yeah, so what you're seeing is, uh, is perfectly normal. Mm. Beirang says, du ban cha, it, do ban cha is, oh, okay. Do, bean paste is also really good for you young eggplant. Mm. Yeah, it's good on everything. Robert Fortune. Yes, Robert Fortune, 1751. That's the I guy. Right That's the guy. Right. That's right. the guy. Smuggled it right out of there. 18th and then uh, yeah. a few times from now on, we'll just call him our friend Bob. Yeah, Bob Fortune. <laughs> I'm going to remember that. Computer malfunction. Sorry. No worries, Clifford. That happens. And uh, time signature. Oh, I like that even better. Bobby F. Bobby F. That's going to be the name. Victor Lindbergh, reading fortunes accounts. Reading fortunes accounts is rather interesting. Mm, I bet it is. Yeah, yeah, right. He might have a different uh, perspective. Keisha Holiday, hey, I'll have a look more into it again. I thought it was the other way around. Mm, there's a subtext going. I must have missed the beginning. Not sure. Mm. Long live the kefir and lava. Ah, ah, yes. Also fermented foods, I believe, and kombucha. Ah, All good for the gut. Yeah, yeah. Very good stuff. All right, guys. Cool. When Peron said yuxiang eggplant, I didn't get it at first because it's a half Chinese, half English mess together. Right, Now right. I get it. I just need a moment to read. That's okay. That's what this it's channel saying. is all about, yeah. right? Mm. Mm. This tea is really good. So if you enjoy aged... Uh, aged shomei or aged white tea you'll notice it'll darken down over time but ours is still sort of in this zone we mm -hmm. we can't see it at all if it's focused or not i'll just go like that but yeah pretty good pretty good so that's what we're having is this strawberry? yeah flavors are really good i like the body of shomei like Jen said in the beginning, this is a, could be called a gongmei. There's a few. Or even some people, I've seen people having bai mudan of the similar grade mm. in terms of plucking standard. It has that sweet hao, but that body of the leaf. The leaf really brings a nice body and a nice floral slash sweet texture and flavor in the mouth. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, back to the book. So, tea keeps our health. Speaking of tea and health and gut health and all that, the book is heading in that direction as well. All right, tea keeps our health. A cup of tea is good for our health. The tea with highest content of polyphens has antioxidant effects, can remove the radicals which make people become aging and slow down the speed of aging. Unique healthy effects about the three kinds of tea. Green tea. In modern city, the white collars often face computers, copiers, printers, and mobile phones, and those office equipment have strong radiation. They are damaging our health at every moment. 
While drinking green tea, such as Dragonwell tea, you can improve such conditions. Green tea contains the polysaccharide, which has good radiation protection effect. One or two cups of green tea a day keeps us more healthy. Green tea also has the functions of firming our teeth, softening the cardiovascular, and resisting to ultraviolet. Iron Mercy Goddess. Nowadays, drinking tea has been considered to prevent cancer, whereas Iron Mercy Good Godness is regarded as the best. Besides, Iron Mercy Godness has an effect on prevention of coronary heart disease. Sorry, I read it exactly as it is, so I have to say Iron Mercy Godness. Puar. Puar has a good reputation in the area of losing weight and reducing fat. In France, Germany, Italy, and Japan, etc., Puar has the laudatory titles of Diet Tea, Instant Slim Tea, Cosmetic Tea, and Silm Tea, etc. In addition, Puar has a certain effect on nourishing the stomach. All right. So, before I dive into the book and my, uh, my questions about this section, I want to give a little disclaimer, right? Uh, for those of you that know us, you know where we stand on tea and health. Yes, tea is healthy. Yes, we don't really get totally behind the modern, overblown, crazy claims that we often see on, I don't know, in your Google ads or on your YouTube ads or about those things. So this is just more of a Chinese perspective on what's the healthy aspect of tea. So here we go. There is one thing I want to mention because I Perfect. realize that uh, sometimes, like, yes, we say those are, you know, those uh, are just, uh, what should I say? What I mean is like a lot of time, like we talk about the tea can lose the weight and then people say, oh, I drink so much tea and I'm not super skinny. It doesn't <laughs> mean tea doesn't help people lose weight. You know what I mean? Like the same mm. with everything. Like. Uh, one thing is healthy doesn't mean they can save us all. Is right. tea anti-cancer based on the researchers? Multiple, multiple, many, many researchers. Yes, it is. And uh, mm. that uh, help, uh, per, uh, like help reducing uh, radiations. Yes, many studies have shown effects of radiation, right? Effects mm. of radiation mm. and help uh, cancer people increase their wide can. Uh, wide blood cells and stuff like that. There are lots, lots of studies confirming those help with the T's mm. health, aka it has right. fluoride, fluorescent, fluoride, fluoride, yeah. fluoride. Firm it have teeth. those, yes. Mm. And uh, you know, catechin, it has a lot. I mean, all those elements are confirmed in multiple studies that is uh, good for our health. Mm. But just say anti-cancer. Cancer patients have the, a lot of study use green tea. Cancer people have uh, after radiation, their white blood cell uh, number drops and right. green tea help them raise the number and stuff. Yes. But on the other hand, it doesn't mean that if I drink green tea, I won't get cancer, right? right. If I insist on uh, being super negative and don't want to sleep and eat all kinds of like... In right. talking about it's a health, lifestyle thing. Yeah, it's, a, mm. it's everything. And uh, I found a lot of times we're thinking about what can I eat that is healthy? What can I do that is healthy? And at some point, we also need to see taking out what's not healthy. Right. And it's not because I stay up every day till 2 a.m. and I drink two cups of green tea. Okay, that uh, just kind of cancels the bad effect of that. They're not mm. working like that. Right. That's why when right, the study right. <laughs> shows that uh, tea uh, is help us in losing uh, weight, it doesn't mean drink that directly means we lose weight. We right. still have to have a proper lifestyle, proper diet, uh, everything works together to help us uh, become healthy, at least so far. It's not a study show that uh, tea can harm our, our health. So, right on. I mean, in terms of a disclaimer, just want people to calm down. Not a disclaimer to say those right, are right. just uh, guessing that tea might have those effects. Nobody knows. That's not the disclaimer about. No, that's, that's a I'm good point. Yeah, say. yeah, and the uh, and the approach is often that more is better. I, again, I think just the way it gets marketed here is that. 
like you said, just have that and everything's fine. And if it doesn't work, have more. Yeah, it's you know? not like that. And there, wanna... there are also study shows too much tea, you can get poisoned for, mm. from those good elements like L-theanine, mm. right? right? So, so uh, everything in moderation, but... Uh, just and... drink some tea every day when you feel like it. You mm. don't have to drink a lot of tea, just for health. And I see the chat about diet on the side too. So, you know, that's another aspect, right? A good mm. dietary lifestyle and a good... Uh, mm -hmm. You know, getting rest Sleep, and stuff. Sleep, mm. be healthy, uh, positive, not positive. Just in general, like uh, our mind is a big part, you know? Right. All right, so diving in here though, there's a few things that were a little confusing here in the first paragraph. Um, not a few, just not confusing. No, I wanted to point out, we've talked okay. about this before in terms of aging. Mm -hmm. Anecdotally, right? When we go to the T regions and we see those, those T guys who are... 80 plus, whether it's Shatai or Mr. Sue or whoever, and these people are spry. I mean, they're, they're getting around, they're doing talks to big groups of people. I mean, Mr. Sue drove us all over Sichuan and took us to various factories. And I mean, he's up and about. And uh, so there's definitely something there about aging. And not only that, the complexion of his skin, the the whole demeanor, his whole demeanor, you know? Yeah, it doesn't feel old. And it's not just the tea. You know, like, right. uh, first the tea is just what we drink. It happens to be very healthy, good for us. But in my hometown, in a lot of regions in China, you notice a lot of the farmers or stuff, they live like 80s and still work in mm. the farm, work oh, yeah. in the field every day. Like, they cannot stop like that. And they, they don't eat kale. No offense to kale lovers, but what I'm saying is that they it. don't eat super food. They don't eat ultra mushroom, even though mushroom is a regular thing for us. But uh, they don't eat right. like a, all, like a super food is a concept. Really, lifestyle is more important mm. than stick to a, a super number of super food. <laughs> you know what I mean? And they right. actually eat quite a simple a lot of times. Mm. And... Uh, and, and fresh, right? Yes. The, there's think... a lot of elements. I mean, mm. oh, we're, we're still learning in terms of studies and researchers keep getting us uh, new information. But at a certain point, we realize there are still a lot of uh, links or connections that we might not be looking into yet. So, and if you go to the tea region, you notice a lot of people smoke. And they're still 80s and super happy. <laughs> yeah, it's the it's most so incredible funny. thing. It's a story, actually. <laughs> uh, we were in uh, Tieguanyin region. So one of the guy was uh, uh, one of the officials. He is like 60 something and still smokes. And we're just joking around. Hey, you're already 60 and you should uh, consider quit smoking and stuff. Uh, this is not saying you should smoke when smoke is good, nothing. Just, a, you know, a little story. Anecdote, anecdote. Yeah, and uh, he was like, uh, you know, smoke make me happy and make me appreciate uh, the tea better. Because even after smoke, those tea taste good. Those must be good teas. And based on our study, because, you know, the, 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 the government always have those, like, even Health, uh, Health Canada, right? They do studies on, say, average uh, uh, Canadian people's uh, weight or they do all those studies we might not know right they uh, mm. they look into so one of the study they were doing the government were doing were average uh, the old people above 80 years old living in Anxi area and what's their life about they want to know more and help people become healthy and stuff and he was like over 60% of our super old people, health, healthy people, smoke. It doesn't. So he uses that to, as an excuse sort that of he, doesn't, yeah, he doesn't have to quit smoking. But it kind of also shows, as, you know, one bad thing is also not going to like take you out take you out and right, one good thing is not give us the guard like we're good right, for good right. you know it really is the whole it's lifestyle. the whole picture yeah right, right all right so that was the uh, story there and then we go into unique properties of three kinds of tea so i was surprised by the uh the sorry a little bit mouse having some mouse trouble here there we go be good good mouse I was surprised about the radiation comment here. 
-hmm. So blah blah blah, strong radiation. The translation, the English uh, Chinese is more talking about that uh, electronic, that uh, oh, magnet, like from screens, that field, the magnetic sort yeah, of those kind of things, and electrons and jazz. Okay, yeah. that's a good point and a, and a good thing for us to mention that if you want to follow along with the finished translation, you can grab it in the mm. link down below. Pull it up. It makes this so when we're going through it, you'll have the uh, the sort of corrected translation. So it's all down there. Right, and it, 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 spe it specifies the polysaccharides, mm -hmm. which have a good protection against sort of monitors and those. I think mm -hmm. if we go back to the time of the book too, right, which mm -hmm. was uh, early 2000. 2008-ish. 2008. I keep saying early 2000, mm -hmm. but it was more like late. Okay, so I was just, I'd be, this probably didn't come from nowhere, this polysaccharide comment, which would be really interesting to learn about that link. But um, just it's not related to translation. It's just Why interesting. Why is it related to the time then? It wasn't. I was thinking oh, fat okay, monitors, okay. but 2008 okay. is pretty much flat screen by then, I think. I don't think we were still using those giant ones, but I'm not sure. Uh, that mm. was more here. Mm. But those giant thick ones were really bad for uh, radiation, basically shooting at you the whole time. Mm. Yeah, pretty bad. And one or two cups has a function of firming our teeth. I think a lot of people don't know about this in the West too. Oh. That um, green tea, ha tea has, has the fluoride. fluoride, right? And it is good for your teeth. Mm. So there you go. Um, the dentist is always going to complain that it stains your teeth, but just remind him, hey, there's fluoride in it. So uh, chill out, man. <laughs> and um, yeah, that's about it for the green tea section. Uh, Tae Guan Yin. I think we talked about it. Basically, it has that effect. And... It's an interesting, you mentioned that it was, and again, it's beyond the scope of the book, but these things are not, um, these things were, were studied and a lot of those studies are, like you said, it's not because it's studied and it's been shown to have an effect that you drink it and you won't get it, right? It's a lifestyle thing. But I think a lot of those studies are also not very well known in the West. Hmm. There are, a lot of them are happening in China and Japan and uh, Eastern uh, nations and I don't think the information uh, comes flowing out as easily yeah, as we would like. But also there are lots in the West. Sometimes mm. it's just not That's directly really... quoted or right. stuff. Like right. the, our common people's world is quite far from the academic world unless right. you dig for those. Right. Right. And who are I didn't know that it was so well known in France, Italy, and Germany, and Japan. So that was interesting that it got the title of diet tea. Because again, you see that here in North America, you see so commonly people talk about oolong and green tea. Um, and you don't see them really glatch on to dark tea, but it's kind of mm. more common. The dark tea is better for if you want to trim a little bit of weight. We have always, a lot of uh, old time. They have quite uh, some export to France and like Europe mm -hmm, has mm -hmm. more link to dark. Yeah, tea Europe has, is more uh, than North America. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so uh, let's head over to the comments. Mm -hmm. Where were we? Nato and Tampa. Mm -hmm. Oh, they're talking about kombucha. Okay. Okay. Yes, kefir, levine, mm. and kombucha, mm -hmm. fermented. So it looks like Fernanda uses green tea. Time Signature makes his own kombucha too. Mm -hmm. He uses black, oolong, green, and white for kombucha, sometimes also dark. Wow. I always wondered about dark tea. Mm -hmm. That should be pretty great. Natto and tempeh are great too, especially natto. Mm. Okay, cool. So lots of chit chat about kombucha and that's that's What's natto. I don't know. I don't know. What is natto? Natto and tempeh. I'm not sure mm. what either of those are. Let us know what those are. We're mm. kind of in the dark. I tried, don't like it with other types of tea. Ah, so I guess Fernanda sticks with the green tea. Milder than the other types to be sure. Mm. Mm. <laughs> but Time Signature likes the non-mild ones too. Darjeeling kombucha do taste delicious, just extremely expensive. Mm. <laughs> That's a factor too. Old school lacto-fermented veggies are great too. Sauerkraut and things like that. Oh, mm. yes. And then they got into the kimchi chat. Mm. 
yeah. which we definitely love, lasts forever. We also don't make our kimchi ourselves. It does seem like a lot of work. I do like to buy Costco ones and let it ferment a little bit more. Victor uh, says uh, polysaccharides is the most for yeah that's right. It's right. not uh, unique to tea. It's just it means a bunch of malted sugar kind of. Right. Is that more common? Yeah, I think uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, tea has those. A lot of mushroom. A lot of food have those. That's why a lot of food are also healthy. <laughs> Ah, T polyphenols work as sunscreen externally. That's why the plant makes them. Not proven for internal, for internal. Mm. A, a lot of times, they, when they look at that, and it from the study translated to to the common news or blog or books, or talking about that, it's not necessarily how they uh, reflect the stuff. Sometimes they help with the uh, like a. Uh, like a UV uh, created uh, uh, free radicals and mm. the tea has right. antioxidant right. that so helps with that. So it's indirect effect. So, yeah, mm. you you will see a lot of, uh, how should I say, like I say the poly, how do you say that? The polyphenols or the polysaccharides? Poly polysaccharides, right? Mm. The effect of that, uh, maybe this study only studies the uh, polys... Uh, Saccharides. Saccharides and the effect of that. Then that effect will be taken to multiple food sources that also mm. all have that. So tea has that. So they will say tea right. is uh, 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 anti rich antioxidant, is a help with uh, um, uh, radiation. And uh, say silver mushroom, also very rich in that. And also, like they would use the same study for multiple things as long right. as they have them. Right. So that's a... Yeah, my to... thought about the radiation too was it was more of a secondary internal It's not a blocking. Not... It's not like a yeah. wall can... Yeah, it's not like sunscreen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right. So uh, Fernanda says she's going to brush more... her teeth right. with uh, sencha now since it has fluoride. Yeah, old times in China, the, uh, we swoosh the mouth in the morning. Like uh, that's how we brush. Sometimes in the tea region where you have tea trip too. <laughs> wow. So Cindy says um, there was some more talk about kimchi and mm -hmm. where people get it, um, which is great. Yeah. Uh, Time Signature grabs organic one. We grab ours whenever we run out. We just get a great big tub of it because mm -hmm. it's good and everything. Cindy had her blood sugar tested recently, came back the lowest it's been in seven years. So oh, way to go, Cindy. Great. She's blaming the tea. Way to go. Attributing it to the tea. Right. And the doctor was happy. So yeah, that's awesome. That's yeah. great, Cindy. Just a little something to add that uh, if you blood sugar is something for a concern where you want to control it, uh, lower like uh, the lower part of the plant is better than the tip of the plant. In more understandable English means right. if you have Huang Da Cha, like the other day I was reading the study on Huang Da Cha, how it's helpful with the blood sugar and stuff better than green mm. tea and black tea. Mm. But it's not just the Huang Da Cha, any lower one. Dark tea are really good. Like mature leaf stands, right. those are kind of proven in uh, various studies, works better on blood sugar regulating right. compared to. But green tea, especially Chinese green tea. Right, if you get into like really fine buds. early green tea, mm. you're getting you know, all bud tea, you're not going to have as much of the effect. Mm. Right on. So Victor says polyphenols is a huge group of substances with a wide variety of qualities. Yes, yes. indeed. Yeah. And there's even just in tea, there's a whole bunch of different ones. Mm -hmm. Sticky NATO, here we go. We were dying to get this answer. Sticky NATO is a very fermented and kind of slimy Japanese soybean product. Fist bump, we just had that the other day. How do you say that in English? NATO? I'm not sure. Is natto? it NATO? Probably we natto. Call natto. Oh, so I wasn't that's sure what it is. Because, it's NATO. Because for Nana, no, I don't. think, brought it first. So I thought it was. Right. Sorry, I'm just moving it. <laughs> I thought it was a sound. You know, it could be Spanish. I just don't know. Right, right, right. NATO. Oh. Yeah, yeah that's, that's those are really yeah, delicious, yeah. but I have a feeling it's a bit of an acquired taste. Let us know if you've had stinky. it before. Yeah, they're really stinky, and even the appearance of them, they look pretty pretty gross, but but I don't know if you've ever had... Um, and it's super good for the bone, because they're rich in K2, mm. vitamin K2. Whoa. Okay, that aside, I just want to talk about okay. Dorian. Sorry. <laughs> so to me, it, it's nothing like Dorian in terms of the flavor or the texture or anything, but in terms of the stinkiness and how I wonder if anybody's ever had Nado or Dorian. 
And if you could let us know if you like either of those things, or if you've tried it and you're just like, no, I'm not touching that. Cause I have a feeling that those both land in that zone. So durian is a, is a fruit. Natto is a fermented Japanese bean product. Both of them smell disgusting, but once you taste them, I bet you can't not eat them. They're so delicious. It's a weird transformation that happens between the brain and the nose and the, when, and the mouth, when the mouth, if the mouth gets involved. All right, let's keep going. Tempe is like a soybean loaf. It's a kind of a protein replacement for vegans. I like your comments, Victor. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Tempe, Indonesian, I think, yeast fermented soybeans. Mm. Yeah, we had a Japanese variety of the other Where day, right? Where are you? I lost it. Oh, sorry, right here. Time signature? Ah, right. So, um, Indonesia. Oh, I've never had that before. Like compressed soybeans worked into a very dense cake. That's tempe. I prepared my first puar western style. Four minutes in a big teapot, no wash, etc. It was horrible. Tastes like horse track. Today, no matter. <laughs> <laughs> we sometimes brew western style uh, puar. You just got to watch yeah, the leaf that. amount. Quite yeah. a lot, especially when I'm working with stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, maybe just watch the amount and, then, and maybe give it a little rinse if necessary. <laughs> so bancha is better, is better for blood sugar. What's bancha? I'm not sure. Maybe soy? So bancha? Time signature. So the bigger leaves that are not at the top of the tea bush. Yes. So I was going to, so when you were talking about the older leaf, right? So of the same plant, you cannot just look at the big leaf because certain uh, cultivars of varieties, yeah. they're huge, but that's they're what he was still... saying. Not at the top of the bush. So yeah, not at the tip of the, the, you don't want the shoots, right? You want the little bit more mature leaf. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I think he's got that nailed. EGCG is a polyphenol. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's a really popular one lately. Lots of study and Tannin is a polyphenol. Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. It is fine with, I was fine with natto smell, but the taste didn't work for me. Whoa, that's so interesting. See, I had assumed I wasn't fine with the smell, but once I tasted, I was like, okay, this is good. When I was a kid, I hated bowls. Now I eat, I, I can basically eat anything. Right. But I, I what do, what's your like, feeling of natto though? Did you like it? Like, I don't like it. I don't hate it. I eat it every now and then for mm. variety. Um, I liked it. I, I didn't like the smell. But like I I'm pretty the specific. I first I didn't explore how to eat it. My way of eating it pretty standard. Uh, pretty simple. You know the the what's that mustard? No. Uh, Horseradish mustard. No 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 that's a Japanese, super spicy. Wasabi mustard. Wasabi, right right. Wasabi and soy sauce. So that's right. basically how I eat it. I don't know if I would like it more with other stuff. I never explore that. Right. And. Uh, I haven't had a chance yet. That's really good. I really like it. We should eat it more. So Josh says he loves durian, especially durian ice cream gelato. Mm. Oh. <laughs> me too, both. But I actually prefer pure durian fruit, part of me, than having it in a cream. That? I thought it was a durian espresso, but it's not. No. I have had durian and a poise. A poises before? I'm not sure what that is. I, I don't know. I do like everything sticking, yummy, stinky, stinky. Sting. I have had both natto and durian. I'm going to be diplomatic and say they're both an acquired taste. Yes, Victor, I totally agree. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Actually, what I mean by I, <laughs> I my theory is you love them or you hate them. And, uh. but, but you might, but my other, my corollary is that if you hate them based on smell, you should push through and try them, at least taste them and see if that works. I don't think it's worth trying again if it doesn't work because right. they are really fragrant, right? I'll try and be diplomatic once, like yourself. They stink. We, we bought one. So in can like here in Ottawa, we cannot get a fresh ones and a really good Dorian. So once I by accident bought a really expensive Dorian. Like a really expensive Doria. Frozen package, right? Uh, yeah, then mm. frozen, but we put that out. Right, of course. To let it ripe. Because when we bought it, it was frozen, right? Mm -hmm. So we put it out and uh, for a couple of days, and our neighbor texts us to say, Are you guys okay? Because it smell like a propane. We think there's a gas leak in the yes. house. We're like, there's no gas leak. We're thawing a Dorian. Literally, it smells like the stinky smell they put in gas to make yeah, it to make smell. Easy. So you don't get dead from it. <laughs> so I want, oh my gosh. So I've had both now and I'm going to be the nice. They're both an acquired taste. Yeah, no, they really stink. 
I feel that natto has very strong sour feet aroma. Yes, but the texture is quite good. Yeah, it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, natto is good. It, it is an acquired taste if you don't grow up in Japan, though. No. Mm. I don't know. I smelled it. I hated it, but I, for, I would, you said it's like durian. Try it. You might like the flavor. And that did it for me. I ate and then I'm like, whoa, this is really good. You're weird at a certain point. I'm really surprised. Yeah. He used to be have really classic, uh, you know, English diet. Yeah, you I'm know, always pretty veggie, adventurous. Smashed yeah. potato mm -hmm. and that steak kind of thing. So, yeah. but you, you were really, he's very nice when I serve things. He eats. I eat everything. Yeah. Do you mean Japanese karachi mustard? Pretty common with natto and rice. Yeah, probably that. It's yeah. not what we what they sent with it wasn't wasabi, but it was no. like a horseradish mustard. Oh. It reminds me of a Czech mustard. Um, but it, anyway, very good, and it really works with that flavor. Really good. Um, I've never had it either. I need to get out more. Well, you know, maybe when this whole COVID thing blows over, we can all do that and get out more. <laughs> Times in here, there's a Danish kind of snack called. Ostepops, Ostepops, which smells exactly like stinky, sweaty feet. Oh my gosh, that reminds me of, uh, there's a Dutch licorice snack too that I've never been able to stomach. But yeah, there's some really interesting snacks up there in Northern Europe too. Well, so that's another thing to put on our list here, this, these Ostepops, which smell exactly like stinky, sweaty feet. Fernanda says, how Cindy, we are all in lockdown again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're wrong. Ostapops. Thumbs up. Yeah. Right, that's right. They're wrong in time signature, both from Denmark. Ostapops. Hilarious Dorian story with the neighbors. Yes, yes. We were like, oh, no, no, it's okay. It's okay. We don't know because we're in it. We don't notice how it smells. Yeah. And Zach points out that most wasabi here in the U.S. or even green Canada dye, yeah. is just horseradish with green dye. That's 100% true. Um, uh. it, it does the job, but the real stuff is really good, too. Licorice is the best. I really love licorice, but the Dutch salted, triple salted licorice or something like that. Let me know if you've ever heard of that and tried that. Uh, time Signature says licorice is the best, as is kale. As is kale. We'll just agree to disagree and head back to the book. All right. Is there more? There is more. Oh, right, right, right. We have the 23 uh, effects yo. of tea. I don't think I'm going to read through these. I don't think it's... It's just a list of things that tea is good for, including hemorrhoids and fistula treatment. I just had to point that one out because it, it was interesting. Um, you know, relaxing the bowels, anti-dysentery. I don't know why I'm so focused south of, <laughs> south of the border right now, but anyway, improving eyesight. Let's move north a bit. Uh, there we go. Reducing fever. <laughs> okay, okay. It's a weird... So weird is because it's translated from... TCM, traditional Chinese right. medicine. That's why it's hard to translate. So these here things in, up here, I'm just yes, going to put a big circle around the three things. the function of tea for Chinese Whoa, medicine. You know, really in the summer, circle. it helps. Go ahead. You're lucky you can't do that mess. <laughs> anyway, so in the summer, it uh, helps with preventing some stroke and all that stuff. In general, uh, I don't think it works to go one by one because mm. uh, it first needs you can a, check out the translation; they're all in there. Hey, wait a second! It Don't needs a lot of uh, explain because a certain things like in TCM when we talk about stomach, it doesn't talk about identical to the Western, mm. the modern science of stomach. In uh, TCM, stomach is stomach plus its whole system. Mm. So you know when people have yeah. depressions, they also focus on stomach. So it might yeah. sound really weird. It's, if yeah, it's not even the whole system. On. It's the whole TCM system. Yes. Like, so each organ is related to various facets of your life and your lifestyle. And so it's that focus that we're just plain unfamiliar with, right. I would say, in general. Uh, but I do want to point in general, tea is considered to the cooling side. If it's a fermented, mm. it's more neutral, like a choufoir. If it's uh, like a fully oxidized, like a black tea, we consider it's warm. So mm. it's great for winter, but not necessarily spring or uh, spring or summer. And that I think we're talking about a little bit more in terms of the season and tea in next uh, week's uh, talk. But yeah. in general, uh, and uh, like the development of the tea early times, why it's served as... Um, 
medicine and it's always boiled because it's cold. Uh, cold property. Right. And early times, uh, people's diet are not like us. If I'm eating, like my majority of diet is meat, drinking cold stuff. You notice that if people eat a lot of meat diet, mm. they don't like hot anything, mm. right? They want a cold, even iced coffee, ice uh, drink because meat and all those stuff are hot. They're trying to us unconsciously balance that out. They gravitate mm. towards uh, cold stuff. Uh, while tea is uh, the cold stuff, while early times, uh, like thousands of years ago, people are more collecting, less chance of eating meat and stuff. So cold stuff, uh, if we eat that directly, that would make it even cold, which would have like diarrhea effect, right? Uh, which ha could cause some sickness because of how cold it is. That's why there are people who drink green tea or drink tea, they, their stomach hurts. Mm. It's not a food poison. In Chinese, the TCM is especially elderly people. Those people usually uh, dress more mm -hmm. than most of the people. Uh, don't like cold water, don't like salad, you know, uh, maybe want a cup of warm water before going to bed. Like that reflects your whole body. Those people should avoid having too much of the cold tea, especially like green teas. Right. And, uh, uh, and that's one of the reason, even when, even though tea is a kind of a leaf, a veggie in China is still not often used like to eat directly because it's pretty cool. And the Chinese diet is not so hot with right. lots of meat. It's still very veggie based. And that's right. why you notice the Chinese diet, even though we eat a lot of veggies, we like a stir fry cooked a little mm -hmm. bit. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, very rare to have a salad in China full of raw stuff, right? We, yeah, we still have those. Mostly right. you see one dish in the whole meal. Right. Or in the summer, we have a little bit more. But in the winter, it's less. Right. So there's some a bunch of questions about this. So, um, right, dispelling the wind. Cindy said, dispelling the wind and relieving exterior syndrome. Wind is uh, in Chinese medicine, as we call wind. Uh, okay. Back out, when we talk about the wind, fire, water, talking about same, because in the uh, uh, Middle Evil times, it also existed in the European, the, in the West culture of the world, is made of those kind of elements. Mm, so mm. when they see that in Chinese culture, they think it's the same, just you think this element, I think that element. Right. It's not the same, it's metaphoric. What that means is, uh, when we talk about five elements in Chinese traditional culture, it's not saying the world is made of these five elements. Mm -hmm. It's made of things like these elements. Right. For example, it's like we say type A people, type B people. It's describing. Mm -hmm. It's not saying. I was going to mention that when you were talking about cold and cooling and cold property, like one of the things you said in one of our... So by the way, if you like, if you're interested in the topic of sort of traditional Chinese medicine and how it can relate to, how it relates to health and stuff, let us know in the comments down below or here. You've, you've done a couple talks more focused on that, but mm. in a way it's almost too bad that we use the word hot and cold because those are right. things that we believe we're very intimate with and we are on a physical right, level, right. but it would be almost better if they called it... Um, like if they just had these random names so that they would, because they're really a model for how the uh, different properties that the body takes on or gets too much or too little of mm. that put it out of balance related to yin and yang. Maybe yin and yang would be better because... Yin and yang is also like, a, yeah. also very misused a lot. That's of why it's not a good one. Yeah. Or say qi, right? People mm. feel like if I talk about qi, it's superstitious. No. Qi and uh, in TCM, Qi and blood is like actual things vis-a-vis Qi, -vis gravity. It, mm. It's not about the superstitious. It exists. It doesn't directly manifest. Right, right. That's Qi. Right. Anyway, so just to use the wind as an example, what it says is, what is wind in terms of uh, symptoms in body are things that moves. Symptoms that moves. Right. Uh, ah. For example, hives. Right. It, it appears here, appears there, appear there. Maybe in fades in one spot and comes up in another yeah. spot. So mm. that is more wind-like uh, symptoms. 
it moves around. It doesn't have a point where it happens just like that. Sometimes right. we have a say a, a rash or something. It's only on my arm. It right. doesn't move tomorrow. It doesn't move in three days, and it happens just there. So that's not when. Is that too much? I feel like no, it's really I think, hard to explain. I that think this to is the... a great topic, but I think I think in order to I think the thing with this list is it's it's just confusing it's really and like it can't a... be explained in a paragraph. It yeah. really needs an understanding of of where this whole TCM thing is coming from, which I think we could continue our series of videos on and should continue mm. our series of videos on in a different context. But I see yeah. lots of great comments here. There seems to be lots of curiosity and some knowledge about what's going on here but probably my favorite comment so far that I've seen is time signatures which says <laughs> dispelling the wind could be a title of a 25 minute frog rock song I'm going to get to work on that as soon as we're done here I'm going <laughs> to start a song called dispelling the wind and I'm going to shoot for 25 minutes of awesome prog rock okay that's a great idea 25 minutes of prog rock yes oh looks like Fernanda likes that that's a big smile I really love long awesome prog rock songs. Okay, so I think, guys, that wraps up this edition of Sunday Tea Book. Be sure to tune in next week for the emotion of tea and the magic effect of tea. So, Ooh. yeah, right? Crazy. <laughs> so we're going, to, uh, we're going to be back next week. That will be the final section of the book. Um, what should we say? Um, this has been a great... I don't know. I guess I'll save it for next week. This book has been great, though. It's a great reference. Um, I don't know. For those of you new who missed the middle section, that has got some great information about the tea categories. Uh, it's a great reference. Covers every aspect of tea. Um, I don't know what else to say, except if you like this kind of uh, information, please <laughs> give us a thumbs up yeah. down below. Uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel. And click the notify bell so you know whenever we go live or post another video. I guess we'll have another quick look at the last couple comments. Okay. Um, Clifford uh, caps on something very technical from Clifford. You don't get tired. Theanine crosses blood brain barrier to make GABA. Fluoride is good for teeth. Most other health aspects are not quote unquote proven. Big fun again. Yes, Lolo says big fun. Thanks so much, guys. See you next week for the, for the post. Pen Ultima. Oh, I love this. Josh says, Whoa. thank you. See you next week for the post Pen Ultima Apocalypse episode <laughs> with a little winky. I, I think, I, I, think I pronounced that right. <laughs> I'm not even sure. Disswelling the wind already sounds like magic. Dispelling the wind. Ta guys. See you next week. Clifford, thanks for joining us. Thanks for all the new folks who joined us. Yes. We'll see you next week. And everybody, thanks for coming back. Teased by Danny says, what is Discord? Danny, click the link down below. There's an invite. It's a little place where we all go and hang out. We share pictures. We share memes. We share recipes. We share songs. We just chit chat. We do all kinds of fun stuff on Discord. There's a link down below. Click it. Jump in there. Um, check it out. Ta ciao. Take care, everyone. See you next time. Take care, everybody. We will see you all next week for the final installment of China Tea. <laughs> and... Will we announce what we're going to do? We don't know yet, but I think we should announce we it next week. We don't know week. yet. I'm still looking. All right. If we know, we're going to announce it next week. If we don't know, then we'll just kind of not talk we about that. <laughs> we won't talk about that. All right, guys. Right. Take care. Stay safe. Drink lots of tea. And until next time, keep steeping. Keep steeping. Bye-bye.